welcome to another episode of Miss Autumn's Art Club. I have the yearning to teach you guys how to paint something, but I know that paint supplies can be a little expensive right now. So I heard that the Dollar Tree is selling some acrylic paint supplies. So I thought I'm gonna go there and find some nice inexpensive supplies and we're gonna make something fabulous. I don't know what yet. So let's mask up, go in and see what we can find to make some art with. Come on with me. All right, it looks like we're really hitting the jackpot here at the Dollar Tree. Um, there are so many new kinds of paints. We're gonna try some. So let's see, they've got, let's do a black and a white. And we'll do a light blue and a dark blue. And, hmm, I think that's it. I think that's all we need right now. We're just gonna do a monochromatic painting. Monochromatic is when you just use one color and then we're gonna add lighter things to make the colors lighter and darker to make darker. I think we could do a beautiful scene here. So over here, let's see, we've got all different types of brushes, some different sizes. I think that what we'll do is we are gonna grab one set of these chunky brushes to make some clouds. And then we are going to grab a set of, let's see, these aren't so bad. Um, let's see, oh, this one is nice. Let's go here. I've got this set right here. We're going to use this set. But of course you can use any of these. These are cheaper ones. They don't hold paint, as much paint. So I don't like to go with these black bristled ones. The soft black uh, bristled ones are fabulous for watercolor. Okay, so over here, they also have canvases at the Dollar Tree. So for a dollar, I can get a set of three canvases. So in fact, you know what I'll do? I'm gonna get the set of three canvases and I'm gonna grab a red and an orange. And that way we can do two different types of pictures at the same time. So all we need now is a little bit of painter's tape. Let's go grab that. All right, here's our painter's tape. Now we're all set. Let's go. All right, I am super excited. This is what we are gonna paint today with supplies from the Dollar Tree. I am really, really excited about how it came out. So get your supplies ready and let's get started. So I've got clean hands, a nice working space. I have an old board to paint on so I don't get any paint on my table. And I have a nice Spinelli shirt on, but I recommend wearing an old t-shirt. I haven't used, ever used this acrylic paint from the Dollar Tree before, so I'm not aware of how well that it stains or comes out yet, but I'm sure I will move soon because I'm a messy painter. So I got these colors from the Dollar Tree. We are only going to be using today the light blue, the dark blue, the black and the white. Now, if your Dollar Tree doesn't have that, you can use a various version of other colors. I would, I'm gonna do monochromatic, which means one color, so I'm gonna use blues. But you could use greens, or even if you couldn't find two of the same color, a darker color and a light color, like a light blue and a purple, and you'll see. Hopefully you can all find the same colors though. So these are the ones we're gonna use today. I didn't show you on camera, but I got a little paint palette uh, that should work just fine. You can also use a paper plate, and if you wash it off right away, you might be able to use uh, a regular glass plate, but like I said, once again, I don't know how well these stain, so we'll see. Then I got the pack of three canvases, and I got some painter's tape, the blue painter's tape. It works really great with coming off and not taking your project off with it. However, I would have rather got a little thinner one, so if you find a thinner one, I would buy that instead. I also bought off camera, I bought some popsicle sticks just for mixing the paint. Then we also have some cloud brushes, is what I like to call them. They work great for clouds and leaves. And then I just got a pack, a, a three pack of different sizes. We've got a straight brush and a, a diagonal brush and a little pointy brush. So let's get started. Let's open our stuff up here. I've got out my popsicle sticks for mixing. I've got my palette. I'm gonna move the paint over here to the side for the moment. Let's open up these canvases. So I'm gonna do three different art projects. Today we'll just do one at a time. 
with all of the stuff that we bought from the Dollar Tree. So let's start off with the canvas here. So if we think about it, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten dollars from the Dollar Tree. Though some of these items, of course, you could use masking tape or a plate or you can even use a plastic knife to do mixing instead of the popsicle sticks or a palette knife. I thought that this would work pretty well for us. So the very first thing that I'm going to do, just get all my stuff ready so when I need it, I don't have to stop and open it all up for you. I also, as you can see at the Dollar Tree, I got this gorgeous jewelry. It's a mystery flavor ring that I got hair on. So let's take that off. <laughs> I am bad at the Dollar Tree. There is so much candy. All right, and then we'll let's open these brushes too. Okay, first off, I'm going to tape down my picture. I'll do this. We might fast forward. We'll see here if I can get it done quickly. I never seem to. I think that's pretty straight. It's okay if it's not that straight. Okay, so what we're going to do is put our paints on our palette. So let's start with our dark blue. I'm going to use, I'm going to just put the paints over here to use and we'll mix them over here. So I've got a dark blue and a light blue and a black and a white. I hope these are good colors. I don't know. They're coming out nice and thick, though. Let me give a little more dark blue there, which I probably don't need. Our canvases are small. So I'm going to start off with this cloud brush, and hopefully it doesn't have that many hairs that come out of it. Now, I also have put a water dish over here to my side and some paper towels so I can blot out my paint. And I'll move these paint brushes over here so they don't get in the way. All right, so let's start getting our paintbrush just a little wet and dab it out. We're going to dab it straight into that black paint and just go back and forth across the top. And we're just blending it down until we run out of paint on our brush. And we'll just dot it out. Now I'm going to go into the blue, the dark blue, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'll start a little lower. And then I'll blend back up into the black because I don't want too much black. And then we'll blend down. Kind of makes it a green color. It's a little dark, so I'm going to blot out my paint here, and we'll dip it in this nice blue. Let's see how this light blue is. Not too light, but that's okay. It'll work for our painting. And then we'll blot it out, and I'm even going to clean my paintbrush out just a little bit because I'm going to put it in white, and I don't want my white to be too muddy. So I'll just dip it in my white now, and then we are going to go. Let's start from the bottom while we blend. Let's back and forth. If your paint isn't blending that well, you can just add a little more water. And as you see, I'm blending the white right up through this whole painting. There we go. Now let's let it dry for just a moment. 20 minutes later. So now our canvas is dry. We're going to go back into the light blue and just thicken it up in here. I think that this, uh, 98 cent store light blue. I'm not a big fan of that. I think I like the dark one better. So what we'll do is we will take... Oof! <laughs> I don't know if you heard that art club, but I just dropped, I don't know, 50 or so <laughs> popsicle sticks. So I'm going to take my blue uh, paint and put it here and then I'm just going to add a tiny bit of black to it this way and just mix it together so I have a darker blue and because it's you know it's a less expensive paint it's you can see that it doesn't stick to the canvas as much so we're just going to go in and darken it up one more time here and you can see it's starting to blend better okay so now we have our painted canvas. What we're going to do is just do kind of a little moonlight, uh, moonlight lake scene. So let's start by giving ourselves a moon. So I'm going to take um, the thin paintbrush and just put a little water on it and, 
and blot it out on my towel just so it's not you know super stiff. We still want it relatively dry to pick up the paint. So I'm going to dip this in the white and we're really, it's really going to tell us what kind of quality paint we're using with white. Now the Dollar Tree has Apple Barrel and another craft uh, paint that they have for a dollar and for 50 cents in these little bottles. Those are fabulous paints. I use those to paint the mural at our school. So we're going to do a little partial moon here. Oops, the white's not too bad. I put it on kind of thick. We don't have to do a whole full moon. We'll just do a Kind of like it's peeking out from the clouds. We'll do some clouds. There we go. Now you can see it's blending a lot because of the light color. So I'm just going to really, really kind of darken up the moon and we're going to leave it there for just a little bit and then we'll come back and add some more. Add some more white once it's dry just to give it a better thicker coat there. So now we're going to make some mountains. So I'm going to go straight into the black and then I'm going to make just a horizon line about, let's make it right about here and that'll give us enough so where our black will show out. So I'm going to take the black and our mountains just need to be kind of a crazy fun squiggly mess. We want to keep it straight on the bottom and you could use one of those popsicle sticks if you want and just use it as your line just to make sure you get your line straight if you'd like and it's okay if it messes up the paint a little because we're going to mess with the water more so here i'm going to fill in my mountains and as you can see they're picking up a little of the blue in the background so it's not quite black but you can still see them and we'll add a little more moonlight to them once they dry okay and i'm gonna squish out my water here and then down here towards the bottom, I am going to use my, I think that I'll use my angled brush that we got. And I'm going to dip it into the black again, and I'm going to put a lot of black kind of in this blue. So we want, and we'll mix a little more of the dark blue in there and just get a really deep dark blue. There we go. Okay, so now we're going to just do our foreground and that means the front. Now I'm painting upside down for you so you you can paint right side up if you'd like unless you want to just try something crazy. So at the bottom here I'm just going to make lines going up like this just like it's grass. Kind of like a little lake here. Maybe I'll make it a little a little less tall in the middle and taller on the sides, kind of a, like it's coming down. We're looking at it from like a little swamp sort of view here, or a little creek bed. And as you can see, my paint's a little wet, but it's helping all these blues bend together. Can you believe we're just using blues and black and white right now? Okay, so we really want to get some deep color in there. And the, the more you let it dry in between layers, the deeper, of course, that you can get it. Let's go back in with our larger brush now. We've got our uh, large flat tip brush. I'm going to get it a little wet and blot it out like I did before. And I'm going to dip it into this white again. And I'm just going to see if I can, oops, I've got a hair on there. Sometimes if you get a little hair on your brush, it can happen when you have a, a less expensive brush. You just ship that right off and see there's a little one on the side. Doing, taking the time to do that will help you not get messy all over your painting. So I'm going to go back into the white now and I'll just see if I can brighten my moon up just a little. Looks like I still need to let it dry a little more. But while, so I want to kind of keep that round shape, while my uh, moon is going to dry up a little bit. We're going to do a little bit of um, a little bit of highlights on our mountains and our water. So I have white on my brush. We're just going to give the mountains a little bit of moonlight on them. See how I have the square brush and I'm just dabbing it on, just dabbing a little bit of color on the top. A little more white at the top because as you can see, the moon would hit there first. Let me go down and we do like over here. 
a little darker on the one side where the moon wouldn't be hitting. And of course, you can make your mountains go down a little. If you can see that, you can make some lines in there. Now, right at the bottom where the water is hitting, you're gonna get some moon. So we just wanna take your, your flat brush and make straight lines like this. this little moon pattern right down the center. And it's okay if you go over these because I want to darken them up in just a little bit anyway. So we'll go over them, go into them just a little. And now I can go into the edges here and I can kind of pull, pull this out. So as you see, nice little moonlight on our water here. Actually, my moon is here, so let me pull, <laughs> pull my water over to, or pull my moonlight over just a little more because my moon's kind of more on this side. All right. Now, I do notice that this Dollar Tree paint is a little wetter, so I'm gonna have to let it dry one more time and then we'll finish off our moon, put in a few clouds and brighten up our grass and we're almost done. So let's let it dry a little longer. 20 minutes later. So we've had it dry a little bit and I've come up with an idea that I believe is gonna help thicken up our paint and brighten our white. So I have a cup here of all purpose flour, not a cup, uh, just a little, little bowl really. I'm gonna take a scoop of that on my popsicle stick and I'm gonna add it to this white and just blend it in. So it's gonna help be thicker. I don't wanna to do too much, but it's definitely gonna make it to where our moon will get a little texture in it and it will be a lot, have a lot more white in it. I'm also gonna do the same thing to our baby blue because it's just not even a color. So maybe that will help or not. It doesn't seem to be doing much. This might be the perfect kind of stuff for slime. It's such a weird texture. I don't think I'm liking the Dollar Tree baby blue. This dark blue is great though, but let's see. Looks like the flower is helping change texture a little. So let's see if our experiment works. All right, so let's go back to our picture. Now what we need to do is make a little bit of light gray here just to have a little reflection on the water of our mountains. So we're gonna take that white that I've thickened up and put it right here, I should have used my stick, and just a dab of the black. And we're gonna mix in and make a little bit of gray, like you can see. Now we'll go back to our square brush, the square brush. Dab it off and pat it down on the paper towel. Now I'm still gonna dip it in and kind of keep it to where it's getting, giving me a little straight line. So I'm gonna make a little straight line of triangles. You can see not too much. Make sure we mix in enough black underneath so we have a shadow. It doesn't seem to want to be dark enough, but there we go. Add a little more black to it here to make it nice and dark. But as we see, we have a little bit of shadow on the water underneath our underneath our mountains. And we're gonna add a little more white again in just a moment to thicken everything up again. All right, now let's see if our experiment works and we can finally brighten up this moon that we've been working on. So I'm gonna go back to my fine tip brush and make sure it's just a little damp and pick up some of our flour mixed with acrylic paint. And let's see how much better our moon is. That is much better. All right, so I'm not gonna do a whole crescent moon. I wanna kinda have a moon peeking out from clouds. So now we have our moon and we're gonna have a great gray. So we're gonna go back to the cloud brushes that I talked about earlier. And we have that gray that we mixed for the mountains. So what I'm gonna do with a dry brush is just pat on that gray. And I don't want too much clouds, but I'm gonna do this. So I'm gonna cover that part of the moon over here. So like it's peeking out behind a cloud and then maybe just a little over here. Now see, it's a dark kind of gray color. This is the underneath of the cloud. And actually, we can even get just a tiny bit of black and dab it off so we make sure the bottom part of our cloud is a little, it's gonna be a little darker than our top. Okay, now we will take our other brush because I don't wanna contaminate too much. I'm liking our, 
our flower mixed acrylic white here. So we've got that, I'll dab it a little so it's not gonna be too thick. And then I wanna just dab some clouds, little clouds on the top, just to highlight the top of my clouds. There we go. So the last thing I wanna do is try out this blue again. So I'm gonna get my, my square brush again and I'm gonna wash it off a little because it has that dark on it. And I'm gonna take my square brush and dip it in the, the light blue and let's see if this works. And we're gonna just add some little light blue texture to our grass. I don't think it's working very much at all. I didn't think there's too much we can do with this light blue. So I'm gonna wipe that off and I'm gonna dip it in this dark color again. This, what we have, remember we mixed the black with this dark blue. And let's just blend it in again. Kinda comes up like a deep sea green. It's really pretty. And then we're just gonna go to our bottom again and add more leaves. The reason we want to just have this big grass, dark grass in the foreground, so you can really see the moonlight on the water. Sorry about that. Now, if you guys are using a, a different light blue, like from Walmart or Michaels or another store, it, your success, you might have not even needed to add the flower. And I'm gonna just make a straight line on the bottom and just kind of push it in there so we have a little more paint and spush it up. Spush, that's an art word, write it down. All right, so now we have our moon. And you know what, I think one more thing too. I am going to go back with my cloud brush one more time and add some more gray to these clouds. I don't think it's hiding that moon enough. Let's try one more time. A little more white and gray there kind of to cover that moon. There we go. I don't want that white line from the moon showing. There we go. And we can add a little more white if we need to to the top. I didn't get it too bad. All right, now I'm not looking at it right side up, but I think I like what I see. The only thing that I think I would like to do is just add a little more white texture to um our water just to get a little more moon glow on it. So I'm going to take the white paint again because I didn't quite mix enough, add a little more of that flower because that really seemed to help it be nice and bright when I didn't have the flower mixed in the paint when we did that shine on the water. So we have our, our flat brush again, dip it in here. All right, and then we're just go back over, add a little white texture to the water. Oops. I think I might have made my paint too dry. There we go. I might have added too much flour. Then I'm just making a cake. Sorry there. All right. Just a little, add a little, little white ripples in our water. And maybe a little more white on the moon there. Or on the cloud. A little more cloud brush there. Okay, and just play with your painting. Remember, this is your painting. It's not going to look like my painting. It is going to be different, but it's all fun. Now, this is my favorite part. Oh, it looks like I didn't tape my painting down very well. So that's where you get this. But you can always, once it dries, take your um, white paint and just paint right over that. Also, with these colors, they might, because it is such, it's not a hard dye, I might be able to just wipe it off with a tiny bit of, little bit of soap and water. And let's see, real quick. Actually, I might not even need water. We take a little bit of paper towel here and we can look at that. It just wipes right off. So I used paper towel and water, no soap needed, just to go over this line. And as you can see, it's just kind of the wet part that seeped underneath the tape. So water is just bringing it right off. And there we go, guys. Our very first monochromatic art club painting this year.